Hey there, today I'm going to show you how to paint a simple watercolor landscape for beginners. At first I used some washi tape, you can use any kind of tape or decorative tape decorative tape like I'm doing here and then I wet the entire page with uh, water so I just put down a lot of water and made sure that everything's wet because I'm using a lot of wet on wet technique and I just wanted to get started on a wet surface and then I used this teal blue tone and started off with the water actually because I love starting off with the water first just adding in the reflections first because it's a good thing to do that first I don't know why but I found that this just works super easy and with the wet surface at first you get this nice look that it's it blends a little bit into the the areas where you don't have pigment and here you can see that I added in even more water this is just clean water and then you get these uh, textures that you can have with watercolors and I actually quite like those a lot of people don't like them but I actually really like those they look illustrative and fun and I don't mind if the watercolors run a little bit into each other if they bleed a little bit I actually don't mind that I think that it adds to the entire vibe of the piece and here I started to add in the trees and the paper was still a little bit wet so you can see it here that it's not super harsh but I, I just didn't worry about it too much and uh, if your paper's already dry it doesn't matter either so just paint the trees and then I removed a little bit of the water because it was just getting a little bit too much you can always do that just use a tissue I was using a reusable tissue here and just uh, use a dry brush and then you can get rid of the water and remove it a little bit and I think that's a fun way that you can go a little bit back and forth with watercolors you can always remove it a little bit and yeah just add it in more of the trees and then also add it in the same color in the reflection here's gonna be a mountain so we see that reflected in the water and yeah i uh, just adding in this darker color and now i'm doing the trees in the foreground this is a sap green tone i really love this green tone i think that it's just such a lively and warm and fresh green tone and so I added in on it in on the right and on the left hand side because we have trees here in the foreground. These are bleeding into the water area as well because this is still wet. But I was absolutely not worried about that. Like I said, I really like this look. And if it spreads too much, you can get rid of it with the tissue and dry brush technique. So don't worry about it too much don't stress about it just paint have fun enjoy it here we are adding in the mountain and it's a similar shape to the one in the reflection make sure that it's similar it doesn't have to be the exact same because nobody's gonna mind and it always gets a little bit distorted in the reflection and also depends on the angle and the light so but be careful that it's a similar shape at least and I did use a black tone actually for the mountain and I just used it with a lot of water so we get those gray tones and yeah just very little black and a lot of water to blend all of that and then you get these mountain gray stone colors and I think that it looks actually really nice and then I started to paint the sky which is actually quite simple I was just a little bit careful here with the lines because the mountains are supposed to be a a little bit sharper and not blended too much so when you do the sky it's a good thing if your mountains are a little bit dry at first but you can see it here 
it bled a little bit, but it doesn't matter because there's a little bit of fog in the air. <laughs> there's just, it's a little bit misty and therefore it's okay as well. So we're not going for perfection here. This is just a very quick illustration. And then you can see that I added in some more shadows to the trees. I just used the same sap green and I probably mixed a little bit black in there just to get a darker shade of the same color. And yeah, so just building that up and painting a little bit more branches. Now I've waited for everything to dry. So in between those steps, you can grab yourself a cup of tea and wait until it's dry. You can just um, use a heating tool. There are special heating tools for watercolors. I really have to get one at some point. I haven't tried one of these yet, so I have to. Uh, you can also use a hair dryer, but I found that the hair dryer tends to spread the paint around in a way that I don't want it to so be careful if you're using a hair dryer um, but it's best to just wait and do something else in this in the meantime and do your laundry or whatever you have to do and get back at it later that's the best way so now we are doing more of the details here in the foreground and I was just using a green tone with a lot of black so a really really dark tone and just adding in more of the trees and these are so simple I'm just doing these vertical lines and just uh, using my brush to create those lines and then it appears as trees and this is super simple I've done this in a lot of landscape paintings and I love this technique it's just a fun way to really quickly add in all those little trees. So now we're blending all of that a little bit and I was just adding in a little bit of green to the mountains as well and this also made the mist disappear a little bit because now we have those sharp edges and sim kind of simple tiny little trees on top of this mountain happy little trees as Bob Ross would say and just keep going with this technique by the way, I also have a Skillshare course about watercolor landscapes and I will link it in the description box so you can check it out because I talk a lot about landscapes in there and show you a lot of techniques, so check it out. And now I'm making these edges here a little bit sharper as well and adding in this dark color here. Uh, just so we get rid of these white edges in between the sky and the mountain a little bit and just adding in a few details to this mountain as well because it deserves to get some trees as well and I'm just blending that a lot so I was using a lot of water again and I was just trying to get this mountain texture and I thought that this was actually a really fun thing to do because you can be super experimental and just mess around with it and you don't really have to think about it so much, don't have to focus on every little detail, don't stress about it and I know this is easier said than done but then when you do it you stress about it but this just comes with practice and if you've painted a lot of landscapes this will really get easier so I urge you to keep practicing especially if you are a beginner keep going don't expect everything to work at that the first try this is not how it works just keep going and really enjoy the process because that's what it is about even if it doesn't turn out completely like you wanted it to here you can see that i'm working more and more on the reflection i was adding the trees on the reflection as well so i was using this darker color to add them in and 
uh, not be as sharp as on the real trees but make it blend a little bit more and now I am adding in more details to our trees again at this point I was just using a black tone so no green anymore just black so we really get this super dark contrast and you can see here that I basically just added in those little dots and spread them around and they don't even have to be connected to the tree. I think that that adds a lot of mystery, makes it look much cuter in a way. It's uh, it, it just looks better if you have those little dots around it that aren't even connected to the branches. I don't know, our eyes tend to fill in the gaps and it looks more interesting that way. So just add in little blobs, don't worry about it too much and yeah, this is a very therapeutic, meditative thing to do if you ask me. I'm just building up that color and in this case I'm really going dark because this is in the foreground and this is very important here and therefore I wasn't afraid to add a lot of shadows. And now I use a white gel pen and you could also use white gouache if you manage to get a super thin line or a white thin Posca pen, any kind of opaque white medium. I use a white jelly roll pen and I do this little line and again don't worry about it being a perfect line because I don't want a perfect line because in a landscape you rarely ever get to see a perfect line and so I just did this line and then I blended everything a little bit later on. I also did a few lines in the reflection and also did a few lines here in this connecting area where the mountain and the trees meet because I saw that in the reference picture but I don't know if it adds a lot to the painting I'm not sure I don't mind it but it's not my favorite thing of the paint my favorite thing in the painting so yeah here I'm just adding in a little details and then smudging them with my finger so they're just very light and not as harsh and yeah so this is how I'm working with the gel pen Here I'm doing the same thing in the reflection. I'm adding in the lighter areas with the gel pen as well and then smudging it a little bit. And now I'm doing a few lines in the water because I've done that in the past and it just makes it look more like water. Even though it's super clear that it is water but it helps to add to the effect. And yeah, doing more highlights, smudging them a little bit and this just adds a little bit. You can also um, go back with a little bit of water with the white jelly roll pen because they are water soluble and if you want to get rid of them again completely then just use a little bit of water. Now I am removing the tape which is so satisfying because you get this super clean border and I will never get tired of seeing this. It's just so fun to remove the tape and then you have this finished pristine painting with this super cool border. And I had this little smudge at the bottom of the painting. I think that this was there before and I just used the ink of a white Posca pen. I tried to use the Posca pen. It appears that I used the Posca pen but I just dipped it into its own ink because it's broken but it worked really nicely so here's the finished piece i really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did so please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until next time goodbye
big shout out and thank you to all my Patreon supporters, Devon, Rachel, Denise, Katie, Tabia, Nadine, Philin, Solaris, Jean, Adana, Shailing, Kip, Denise, Michelle, Michaela, Rosalyn, Agnes, Rebecca, Ulrika, Lily, Anna, Julia, Vera, Pam, Jen and Karen. I hope that I pronounce all the names correctly. Thank you so much for being a supporter.